Today I'm with the uh, Deputy Editor of uh, Investigations at Sunday Times, uh, Nami Vijayadasa. Um, I'll uh, take to the entrance uh, uh, to the interview with one of her blog posts. Uh, and uh, have you heard about uh, uh, the breeze uh, blow through a Kohamba tree? Uh, so, uh, you, have you listened to it? Uh, you must. Uh, so let's uh, listen to the journey of uh, journalism from one of inspiring and prestigious journalists uh, in our country. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, begin with uh, your starting point of journalism. What made you to choose journalism and uh, what inspires you to uh, choose journalism? I needed a job. That was basically what it was and my father saw the advertisement. I was uh, se- I just turned 18. I was. One month after turning 18, my father saw an uh, advertisement in the, the island newspaper and uh, said, you can apply for this. It wasn't a conscious decision. Okay, uh, why did you decide to like uh, continue in this uh, field? What made you do? Uh, because once I joined, I realized that this is what I was born to do. I mean, I've never changed my mind about that. It's now been... 27 years since I joined and uh, some people thought I would leave because it's not easy being a journalist, it's also a very low paid job and there are a lot of challenges when we started out there was there were no mobile phones, there were no computers, there was no internet. We uh, often went by bus and we had to uh, use the typewriter and we had to stand in line to use the office phone so there were a lot of challenges except that at that time we didn't see them as challenges. And from a very early stage, it's journalism is not only about the love of writing, but it's about asking questions and getting answers. And from an early stage, I realized that there's power in that. And I never really wanted to give up that power of being able to ask questions and get answers. Okay. Uh, and uh, how do you come up with ideas for your stories? And, uh, what is the most uh, interesting story that you have uh, covered and uh, can you share some experience with us? Maybe, yeah. I mean, all of us journalists, we have a knack of identifying stories, right? So most of us, either before you're trained or during training, understand how to identify what is something of public interest and something that can be developed into something that the public would like to read. So that is how we identify stories all the time. There are there are issues that, for instance, your next door neighbor might say, you know, there's this problem and I'm not able to get any answer. And if it applies to a wider audience, because you're a journalist, you have access and you take up that story and do it on their behalf. So it's, it's uh, matters of public interest. They also have to be um, readable, accessible to the public. And uh, for me, it has to have a positive outcome. Um, I mean, in terms of the stories that are interesting, they're all different, right? If you're doing human interest stories, the kind of things you look out for are different. It's about emotions, picking up color, um, conveying a story to the audience in a way that they will have some feeling and connection with the human interest story. I think what I liked doing a lot was during the war years, covering the conflict because we were able to do it from a human angle, not necessarily a military angle. And now I'm very much invested in exposing corruption. And that is a different challenge. It's not the same challenge as you had when you had to go physically to the uh, to the ground and cover stories. It's about looking through documents, uh, finding answers in things that are hidden, uh, developing contacts, building trust. It's very, very challenging uh, to build trust in order to cover a story like an investigation because the people who have the information often don't want to be named and they have to trust you enough and you have to be professional enough for them to know that they can come to you with the information and you will do a good job in public interest. And um, what do you like? What do you think uh, is what do you think is the future of uh, journalism, especially in this print media? I think more uh, fewer and fewer people are reading. It's not only about the print media, but it's also about any media. I think the access that you know, that that so. I think more and more young people and also the future generations will just go for very short bits of information given on social media. 
and I don't know if that the cycle will reverse so that they come back to professional journalism but my personal experience is that even if I write a very strong investigation it is almost never read until I tweet it or until I go to social media and that also the whole story is not read but only the, th the points that I summarize so the attention span of everybody is very very small now and their patience to read words is very small but then I also realized that um, television news is not getting a, a high audience either so I don't know whether people are jaded but uh, but this is reality and, and we are reflecting the reality of the world that we live in and if you don't, if they don't make the choice to um, you know use professional journalism and the work that we produce in order to inform themselves there will be another Avakalir like what happened last year because whatever the situation the country falls into will take them by surprise Okay, and uh, now these days uh, I have experienced this. Most of the young uh, people are not like encouraged to enter into this journalism uh, field, uh, telling that there is no future, and they are getting very uh, low payments, and all. Uh, so, what is your opinion about this? I agree. I agree that uh, the salaries are a huge impediment, and it's not been easy for any of us, even at the Sunday Times or anywhere. It's not been easy because in journalism, salaries tend to stay low over the years and and there is a certain degree of exploitation of our passion because this this industry simply because there are there is so little salary and and facilities runs on passion it's people like us who are invested in journalism who are born to be journalists who, who want to keep asking and providing answers that are still staying in the field so I do understand that fewer and fewer young people are joining, but this is a crisis that is all over the world. People are facing it all. Professional journalists all over the world are losing jobs. And I can't predict what the future will be for journalists, but I know that there are people out there who want this job, who want to do this job. And I know that if there aren't any people joining and staying in this job, the public are going to suffer because whatever it is, nothing can replace professional journalism. Is there anything you want to uh, like uh, give, uh, tell to the young generation who are willing to continue in this uh, field journalism? I think that it's 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 a really um, privileged job. It's a privileged job because you get the kind of access nobody else gets. And if you do a proper job, you also get the power that I spoke about, the power of being able to ask questions and give answers. You have a power to change the situations, even though sometimes it takes a very, very long time. You do end up sometimes very discouraged, depressed, because obviously the work is hard and still you don't get paid either. But there is no replacement for the kind of duty that you're doing. And we really are playing a role in society that is very helpful. In terms of money, there are, um, you do get your salaries, but there are always also ways of negotiating with your company so that you can do freelance work for some other places, for maybe international magazines or, or news outlets that don't conflict with, with your, your local organization or, and actually complement the work that you're doing here. So there are ways out of that, but I will never fool anybody into thinking that it's going to be easy. Um, I will only encourage people to stay because we don't always have to be, all of us don't have to be corporate sector, commercial minded, <laughs> which I'm not denouncing at all. That's another role that people play in society, but there's no replacement for us. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Have a nice day now. <laughs>